Welcome to the Confident Retirement Podcast. Is doing the most important things alone a good idea? How comfy are you with your choices when it comes to life's biggest decisions? What is real peace of mind with financial confidence and how can you get it? Chris Fleming and Mark Peachy are the founders of LPF Advisors in Sarasota, Florida. On the show, they bring together the best and brightest minds to share with you how to have a more confident financial picture. They empower listeners with simple, common sense and financial wisdom. And now, here are your hosts from LPF Advisors. Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to the latest episode of the Confident Retirement Podcast brought to you by LPF Advisors. I am your host here as always, Chris Flaming. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming Aaron Arenbart to the show. He is a Medicare professional in the space based out of what was Orlando previously. Now he's in Sedona, as you can see on the screen. He's right in the middle of all the mountains and there's no wind. Aaron, thank you for being here and welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Chris. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, let's have some fun. So you have a interesting history. I was kind of checking you out on LinkedIn. So if you could just kind of go through that real brief for me on how you got into the the business and why you chose that. Sure. Yeah. So I've been um, I guess licensed as, as an agent since 2002. Started over in California where I grew up. So I'm not. Side of it, I was working mainly in the individual family plan market. So for individuals that were under 65, um, serving that community for many people that are self-employed or just not getting benefits from their employer. And then was doing that for about seven, eight years. And then from that point forward, in about 2008, got strictly into Medicare. And most of it was Medicare supplements. And then a couple of years later, dove into the Medicare Advantage side. So really dealing with both sides of Medicare. And a lot of it at that time was dealing with it from, um, from a carrier perspective, being the face for that specific carriers, mm. working with the brokers. So really training the trainers um, and going out and just making sure the brokers knew, you know, how Medicare worked and the different plan options. So, and then now most recently I am independent. So work with multiple carriers. So really just try to be unbiased and, do what's best for the client. Okay. And was there something that kind of led you to say, hey, I was training the trainers. Now I'm going into the individual space. Um, and why did you, because there's lots of lines of insurance, right? So what what made you pick um, Medicare specifically? Good question. I mean, it kind of fell into my lap in the sense of, um, so with the Affordable Care Act that was passed um, or kind of went into place in 2014, um, where the individual market was really just turned upside down. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, we were really, I mean, we were mainly kind of focused in Medicare prior to, but because we kind of saw the writing on the wall. But once ACA came into place, um, it was just, okay, Medicare is going to be what we're pivoting to and what we're doing mm -hmm. the whole time. So it was just, I guess, kind of that experience just led me to continue with that path into yeah. the Medicare adjusting to what was going on. Like most things, you uh, figure out what's going to happen and you adjust. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So if you could go back in time and give your younger self some advice, um, what do you think that that would, would be from on a professional standpoint? Professional standpoint? Um, yeah, I mean, just really, I guess I was just in California, but I think just opening my eyes up to how each state is so different mm -hmm. in, the way, in the way some of these Medicare rules work. I mean, we got two sides of Medicare, so I won't go too far, but at least in the Medicare supplement world, it's being administered or kind of overseen by the Department of Insurance. So each state can be a little different in the way the rules work and how you can get a Medicare supplement. Okay. I guess just kind of opening my eyes up to knowing more about how different our country is state by state. Yeah, right. And that some a lot of that is you don't know until you know, or you right. don't know what you don't know until it, you come across it. Exactly. Okay, so are there some things that you're liking specifically right now about where you're at with your business? I think just the flexibility of really. So I have, you know, back then I just had my California license. Now I'm licensed in 30 plus states. So just really being able to see the different markets and understand them kind of from where rural versus urban living and just the difference lifestyle that people have and understanding they're really not, there's not one plan that fits all and just understanding that. 
Yeah, and I was I was kind of fascinated to learn recently that um, things can even vary in the same state based on the zip code. Exactly true. Yeah. yeah. So the zip code hot. Yeah. Why is that? You know, you, let's say you may have two counties next to each other. Why might the plans from the same carrier be different? You know, I, I can't get too specific. I just okay. know, so, but, it's, but it's on the way the Medicare just because it's each each county based on the funding and, and mm-hmm. the demographics of the seniors and the population um, is how the yeah. really how funding kind of gets out to the carriers who didn't develop those benefits. Right. But yeah, that's where you can kind of see some carriers will be more in certain areas where there's a lot of senior population and dense mm-hmm. population. And you can mm-hmm. see more robust benefits because of that. It's almost likens it to how the uh, property casualty insurance is going in Florida. Right. <laughs> People with companies pulling out and not doing certain zip codes based on claims that are happening. Okay, yeah. so let's let's jump in a little bit. I'm just I'm wondering if you could explain for us on a high level why does Medicare exist, right? What's what was the the purpose of it or why why is it around? So yeah, I mean I think you know you're going back what to World War II time where mm-hmm. we just saw a lot of the population, the seniors just didn't have any a way to access healthcare. Mm-hmm. So through that, you know, our government recognized that and developed the, the Medicare health, health insurance system, uh, which is really what they call original Medicare. So part A, part B being the, the medical, the hospitalization, and then mm-hmm. the outpatient type services. So just, you know, it, finding a way to make sure our seniors have a way to access health care. Yeah. It, After they're done working. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you, you mentioned, and that's a good segue. You may, I mentioned a couple terms there. So we have Medicare supplemental plans and then we have Medicare Advantage. So maybe you could just talk about what a, what a supplemental plan with traditional Medicare is first of all. Um, sure. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll back up even further. Just so essentially when you look at Medicare, there's really two general ways to receive your Medicare benefits once you turn it 65 or get on to Medicare Part A and B. So that's the foundation. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you need that prerequisite of having the A and the B in place. So the red, white and blue card. From there, you can kind of you have those two roads you can go down. You can sell, keep with the original Medicare, but with that. Typically, original Medicare is described as an 80-20 plan, meaning Medicare will pay 80%, beneficiaries paying 20%. And that 20% doesn't have a cap. So a lot of the times, you know, we're coming off a group plan or individual plan, we have what's called an out-of-pocket maximum. But with original Medicare by itself, there isn't one. So you can kind of see that there's just that exposure, that unknown, unpredictable, like, hey, what happens if I had a heart attack? What's going to be my cost? So that's where a Medicare supplement would come in and really fill in those gaps of what original Medicare doesn't cover. Okay. So the co- co-insurance, the, the deductibles, items like that. So that's the really the, the benefit of having the supplement. Essentially, you're paying each month a premium to that insurance company to transfer the risk to them. So if you ever had a claim, they're going to pick up that 20% along with some of the deductibles. Okay. And is that where you get into all the letters, the alphabet suit? Exactly. And it's okay. really, yeah, two, great point because you have parts of Medicare, which are lettered. So you got part A, part B, part C, part D, and then you have plans, which also are lettered A, F, G. So it can be confusing. So it's just knowing the parts and the plans. But yeah, the government likes to make things a little sometimes more confusing than need to be, but. Okay. And then, so contrast that with Advantage plans, how, how those are different than the traditional Medicare supplementals. So yeah, Medicare Advantage plans, um, I kind of describe as kind of traditionally what you're used to in the employer market, mm-hmm. where you have an insurance company. So essentially that Part A, Part B would be, you're, you're giving that up to that insurance company who's designing the benefits and the network. It has to meet and and cover everything that original Medicare covers. So you're not gonna have any holes of, oh yeah, my durable medical equipment's not gonna be covered on Medicare Advantage, but it's covered on on a original Medicare. So none of that's gonna happen. But yeah, what a Medicare Advantage does, essentially it rolls up the Part A, the hospitalization, the Part B medical, and in most cases, the Part D, which is the prescription drug plan, and rolls it all into one plan, which you may hear it 
described as Medicare Advantage or Part C. So that's the other part of Medicare. And with that, I mean, there's benefits like anything, there's pros and cons. Um, but typically you see those plans, very low premium, but you also have a network of, of physicians. So it's really just knowing you know, what your lifestyle is, your budget is, um, your health is, and knowing which, which road is, is the right one for you. Okay. So the, I think from what you're saying here, one of the key things is, is if you think in terms of the advantage plans, it's kind of like being in a network where the traditional Medicare supplements there, there isn't a network that you have to belong to. Is that a true statement? That's one hundred percent true. So yeah, okay, great, great point. So as we know, Medicare is a federal program, so you can go to any doctor, any hospital in the nation that accepts Medicare. So that's one of the beautiful things about original Medicare and combining it with the Medicare supplement is essentially you can cross state lines, you can cross counties, you don't need a referral to a specialist. So that's kind of where you can get into what some of the differences are and why people would choose original Medicare and a supplement over a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. So you, you may have people that come to you that are, have, that are dead set or they've already got their mind made up that they're going to do a certain thing. And then maybe they don't understand fully what they're, what they're getting into. Is that part of the education that you do, Aaron? Exactly. Yeah. So I really say to, or try to be unbiased as possible and really just, mm-hmm look at it from my client's perspective and what what's going to be most important and, and, and right for them and go up at that route. But as you, our seniors, they get bombarded, unfortunately, with commercials and their mailboxes filled up. Yeah. Um, unfor- yeah, somehow, you know, our telemarketing companies, they know when people are turning 65 and their phone it just starts getting blown up, you know, just right about that 64 year mark mm-hmm. and then go forward every year thereafter. Okay, so so with all that information that comes to them, um, and it is it is actually possible to get too much information where you can't make a decision or or to get more confused than what you started. Um, what do you commonly see as some misconceptions that you help people overcome, or biggest misconceptions that people have about Medicare? I think um, some of it's going to be just a supplement. So that term itself, I'm supplementing my Medicare yeah. where generally that's true, but it's also a type of product. So mm-hmm. just really um, diving down and making sure they understand well, a supplement. Yes, you are supplementing it when you use a Medicare Advantage plan, but it's also what's called a Medicare supplement or also known as a Medigap plan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually a product. And just knowing really the rules around the different, the two different products, the supplement and the advantage. So supplements are still underwritten unless there's certain qualifying events where Medicare Advantage plans have windows of time when you can enroll, just like on a group plan. There's no underwriting. You just have to have certain windows or special enrollment periods where you can get into those plans. So if someone who's just turning 65 is what's called the open enrollment period for a supplement and they have a six month window. A lot of times in some states, if you miss that window and you have some health issues, it's really difficult to get into a supplement. Mm. So it's just kind of knowing those little nuances about really the different rule books, I call them in terms of how a supplement works and a Medicare Advantage plan because they're very different. Yeah. You almost need a college degree. <laughs> yeah. And what I, I would you think that's probably um, the reason that someone should consult a Medicare professional is is because of all the information out there or all the the confusion around what things mean and what the terms mean? I do because it's because between the parts and the plans and it, it feels like there's so many moving parts when there is. But when you work with someone like myself, we can really hopefully demystify that and just bring some clarity and just ask some really, you know, specific questions about your situation and really kind of give you that information in a way that empowers you. So at least you feel confident in working together with your agent and knowing, okay, yeah, I feel like this is the right, you know, for what I can, no one has the crystal ball. So based on what I feel my health has been and what I can afford, um, I'm good with this. And that way, because we get, like I said, the seniors get so bombarded 
every year with the ads. And really it's all geared around Medicare Advantage because that's where the big problem is for the insurance companies. Right, yeah. So you don't hear about the Medicare supplement side, which, you know, if I was, if I had a stroke or a heart attack, so the big, you know, acute Mm -hmm. or chronic type conditions, cancer, I would personally want to be on a Medicare supplement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, know, equal in terms of affordability, having the money to pay each month for the premium, um, and just having that flexibility because you just, you know, have that access to be able to move to one doctor to the other or hospital if you need to. Right. Specialists, whatever that might be. Okay. So, um, and when can people make changes? So it it's, there's, you talked about the enrollment period, but let's say you're already 65 or over and have been in a plan. When can you make a change? And if you were in an advantage plan one year and you wanted to switch to a traditional supplemental, um, can you just do that anytime or when can you do that? Great question. So, so let's look at the Medicare Advantage side. So with the Medicare Advantage world, once you're already on to Medicare, um, there's what's called, there's two windows that are open to everyone that are on, it's on the Medicare. So you have what's called the annual election period, which runs from October 15th through December 7th, also known as AEP, with some of the Medicare jargon. And then you also have the open enrollment window or period, which is also from, it's from January 1st through March 31st. So those are two windows where you can make changes to your Medicare Advantage plan or go back to original Medicare. Okay. Let's start with annual election period. So October 15th through December 7th, any change you make there. So that could be with your Medicare Advantage or your standalone prescription drug plan, which that any change that you took or you fill out an application for would start January 1st. Now, if you miss that period of time or for whatever reason, um, you didn't like the Medicare Advantage plan that you enrolled into, that's when or just most recently, a couple of years ago, the government introduced again, the open enrollment period, which gave you one more opportunity to make a change. And that's again from that January 1st to March 31st window. Um, so those would be times where you can switch your Medicare Advantage. Now, both during those periods of time, you can switch back to original Medicare. So you can say, okay, I don't want the Medicare Advantage plan. I just didn't like how it worked. You can go back to your red, white, and blue card and using that. Now, the only thing though, is that doesn't guarantee you a Medicare supplement. So that's where just understanding these rules, again, now you're going to the Medicare supplement side of knowing how those work. And typically people would have to go through underwriting. So filling out the health questions to qualify. Okay. Unless there was something like a move um, where you just recently moved um, coming off of an employer plan. But if you're strictly just coming off a Medicare Advantage plan into a supplement, more likely you're going to have to fill out health questions. Okay. Okay. And those are pre-qualifiers. But did, or is that like, say, getting life insurance? Does it go to the extent where you're doing blood, urine, you know, doctor's records, or is it, or is it just answering questions? It's answering questions. They may do what's called the APS, an attending yep. physician statement, mm-hmm. uh, but no blood or, yeah, no, no okay. type, yeah, so no blood or anything like that, but there could be an APS requested. Yeah, to doctors. Okay, um, so let's switch gears a little bit. I'm curious, um, is there something that you're passionate about personally outside of your business? Yeah, actually, so I've really kind of been going down most recently this this rabbit hole of, so I'm also doing legal defense for self-defense type insurance. Okay. So people that, you know, as we understand what's going on in our world today, it's getting a little more chaotic and diver- and just, you know, our world's just not the most friendly place. Um, so a lot of I've seen is a lot of these people, you know, they want to have the way to defend themselves. So they're purchasing guns for their home protection, but they don't understand a lot of the, the rules and laws around when you can be justified in using a gun. So I also work with people who understand the importance of if you ever have to use your gun, that can be just doing a de- defensive display to mm-hmm. actually having to sadly have to shoot someone in self-defense, yeah. um, knowing that there's going to be a big legal fight afterwards. And as we know with attorneys, that's not cheap. So having some type of protection there where you can get some insurance where it's going to cover all of your legal defense. Okay. 
All right. So is that is that something that's new to the the insurance industry or has it been around? It's been around. We just okay. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it's a very competitive market. There's several different types of insurances companies out there that offer this. Okay. This, and what, yeah. what's it called again, Aaron? Well, it's, not, it's legal. Def- I mean, legal defense for self defense. Okay. Okay. I types. Of, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, you don't you don't think about the the consequences of that of, of like you said in the unfortunate situation where you have to discharge the firearm um, and someone gets hurt then the, the legality of after that yeah, yeah. Everyone, don't even get me started on <laughs> yeah. suing people for things yes. okay so i'm uh let's switch back on the business side is do you think there's an obstacle or some a challenge or something like that that you have yet to overcome in your business something that you feel like you need to to get over or to overcome to to move yourself forward i guess it's you know, really just um as you there's just a lot of noise, obviously, when it comes to the Medicare, the TV ads and, and everything. You got these big call centers that are out there just causing a lot of unnecessary type movement and trickery and kind of smoke and mirrors. It feels like a lot of our seniors get caught off guard in the way, you know, we can say, hey, we're, we're going to add some additional benefits, but they're not really told they're actually going to have to be switching altogether yeah. their plan. So just really kind of being a bigger voice to help. Cause I like to feel like, you know, I put myself in that senior shoes and do what I would what done for my parents or, you know, whoever I care for. And that's the kind of how I approach it. So at the end of the day, I really just try to leave that person in a better place than when I found them. And sometimes that might be saying, Hey, you know, I commend you, you're on a great plan and I wouldn't change it and tell, you know, tell everyone else you talk to too, that you're not moving. Well, and I think that's where our fields, uh, our professions run on parallel tracks where, you know, you want to do what is the best for the person. You want to be their advocate. You want them to have the best outcome that they can, given all of their information exactly, uh, and their situation. Okay, that's great. So um, if people wanted to get in touch with you or find you, what would be the best way for them to do that? That's it right now. My, I don't have a website that I've got developed fully yet. So probably the best thing would be my cell phone where they could text or call. Okay. Um, is it okay to give it yeah, to you now? Absolutely. Go ahead. It's area code 407-600-4437. So that okay. would be my, my cell phone. So call, text, um, you know, questions I could help just kind of get you guys in the in the right direction. Okay. And you said there's 30 some states or something like that, that you are licensed in, right? So good chance that you'd be able to help. Correct. Or at least kind of give you some direction. I mean, and just what you can do. What your options are. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Listen, Aaron, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here with me today. This has been very informative. I've enjoyed speaking with you and I want to thank everyone for tuning in, listening and watching the Confident Retirement Podcast brought to you by LPF Advisors, where we are hoping to raise the retirement confidence of everyday people just a little bit more to another level, one show at a time. Thanks, everybody, for watching, listening, tuning in. Take care and be well. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Chris. You've been listening to the Confident Retirement Podcast with Chris and Mark from LPF Advisors. For more information on them and retiring confidently, please visit lpfadvisors.com. If your ears are pleased and your mind is now at ease, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.